Welcome back to Rods and Reloads. This video is gonna be a predecessor of the video we had before, which was kind of just the basic flathead rig. In this video, we're gonna go over a little more detailed flathead rig with the rod, the reel, the line, and why we're doing certain things when rigging for flathead catfish. First things first, make sure you have the right rod for the job. What we run here for Rods and Reloads is Catch the Fever Hellcat rods. Almost all we run are heavy rods. We love the Hellcat heavies. They have a not a super soft tip, but they do have a soft tip, but they have a ton of backbone. That's why we like the heavies and extra heavies when we're running J-hooks, which is what we're gonna explain in this video. The next thing that's super important when you're picking your flathead rig is gonna be the reel. You don't need the most expensive reel in the world, but we choose pen reels for the most part on all of our flathead rigs. This is a Pen Squall LW15. We run Pen Squalls and Pen Fathoms. Both have a really good amount of drag, a solid clicker, and can hold the amount of line you need for flathead catfish. The next thing you wanna think about is the line you're using. And it all depends on the structure you're fishing. We run straight braid on our reels. Um, we run straight braid leaders. The same line we have on our main line is the same line we're running on our leaders. We do that because we're fishing wood or we're fishing stuff that isn't structure that'll cut our line. If you're fishing rocks or if you're fishing man-made structure, you may want to consider at least running a monofilament or fluorocarbon leader, which has a lot better abrasion resistance. Braid does not, if you nick braid, it can break quite easily. So we run 80 pound braid as we're fishing wood, a little heavier braid, so we can really rip those fish out of there. The next thing on the agenda when you're setting up a flathead rig, you kind of want to figure out how long of a leader you want. Um, I typically run anywhere from 14, 12 to 14 inches and down to like four inches. If I'm fishing super, super heavy structure, what I'm going to do is shorten that leader up, give them a shorter leash, we like to call it when we're catfishing. Um, and if they're pulling clicker continuously and your bait's moving and clicking, you want to make sure you want to bring that line in sometimes so the bait's not getting wrapped around a tree. We're fishing a lot of heavy structure. Sometimes you want a shorter leash for catfishing. Now we're going to tackle everything above the swivel of the leader, which consists of a sinker slide, which can hold any weight size you want. The nice part about sinker slides is why we use them. You can change the weight for the conditions you're fishing or the bait you're running, which is really, really handy. Instead of running inline weights, all you have to do is unclip the weight and put a different weight on. Below the sinker slide, I either run a plastic bead or a rubber bead. I do prefer a rubber bead um, all it does is protects the knot on top of the swivel from your sinker slide or anything running into the top. After the bead, you tie the swivel on. The point of the swivel is not only to stop your bead from going past the leader, it is also a swivel. So when your line is spinning or it's spinning under the water, if you have a bigger bait on, your line doesn't get all twisted. After you get the swivel tied onto your main line, the next thing you want to do is tie your leader. I usually took about 16 inches on the leader just to make sure I have enough to tie my knots. On this one, I'm doing trialing knots. I did a trialing knot to the top of my swivel and I'm gonna do a trialing knot to the bottom of my swivel. If you're unfamiliar what a trialing knot is, a trialing knot is going through the eye, bringing it back around, going through the eye one more time, you're gonna have a, a loop and then you're gonna start twisting and it's gonna make you a second loop when you start twisting. And after you twist eight to 10 times, you put it through the loop you did from putting it through twice and then the bottom loop when you started twisting, you wet the line and then you pull it tight and it'll have two strands of line on the eye of the swivel or hook. All right, once you tie your line to your swivel, if you were gonna snell this hook, which you don't really need to do on a J hook, especially with braid, if you were gonna snell it, you would wanna snell it before you tie it to your swivel. I am not snelling. I am also gonna try lean to this hook. These hooks are Nocturnal Nation hooks. They're actually designed to be snelled because they have the rubber sleeve on there, so it's anti-slip, I believe, on the hook. But we're gonna try lean knot the hook as well, which is two through. Once again, you're wrapping it, 
then you're putting it through both loops and getting it tight. So I'm going through two times here. I'm gonna to try to get the leader about as long as I want, which is about right there, eight to 10 inches. And I'm gonna pull a little extra line out here. So I got a longer tag, because I wanted to make sure I get it at the right length. What you do is just wrap it around. I don't like long tags when I'm tying knots, but three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the bottom loop and then the first loop from going through twice, which is right there. And you wanna make sure you start pulling this, this one more so you can keep your length. Otherwise it'll just get to where it was before. And then all you do is pull that tight. And that is a two strand trialing knot over the base of your hook there. Another thing you wanna think about is when you're running your clicker for live bait. And it is important to run a clicker if you're running J-hooks. You don't need a tight line. So what you do is you turn the clicker on right here and you open the bale. And what that does is allows your bait to sit there in the water without pulling line out. And it sounds like this. This is actually a little uh, quiet clicker, but when a flathead inhales a bait. So flatheads eat with a vortex. They create a vortex, they open their mouth really fast and it shoots the bait straight into their throat. So when you hear this when you're flathead fishing, that is a flathead inhaling your bait. You don't have to wait. When you hear the, the snap, this, that means that bait went straight to the back of their throat. You wanna remember, if they start running with your bait, which typically on a bigger fish, it's a nice, steady, sometimes they're going fast if there's current. You want to make sure you're setting the hook at the opposite direction that they're swimming. If a, and if a flathead inhales your bait and starts swimming at the boat, you might want to wait until it gets up to your boat to set straight up. All right, so let's get into a little more detail about when a flathead actually hits your bait. What it's going to do, it's going to snap like that, or it's just going to start pulling, pulling the clicker. The first thing you want to do is turn that clicker off Get your thumb on there real light and feel for the fish to see if they're swimming away from you. And when you realize they're swimming away from you, you can bring your tip down, close your bail with the clicker off, reel down. When you feel the weight of the fish on the tip of the rod, rip its face off. End of story. Have a great evening.